Many years ago, I came across a few lines in a book that I connected with. They were, it's easy to judge, but you never know another person's heart, what gives them strength and what breaks them down. I have learned to listen more and speak less. The result has been eye-opening conversations and inspirational moments that I have shared with you right here. Hello and welcome back to my channel. It's Crystal One on One and we're on location at Kampala Sheraton Hotel. Now this show is brought to you by Roke Telcom and today I have someone who is used to being behind the camera. Apparently he's a little camera shy. We will find out. Real name Ian Akankwasa. Thank you so Sasha much. Sasha Vibes, yeah. welcome to the show. Pleasure to be here, Newman. Ah, That's CEO Sasha Films, is it? Sasha Vibes Productions. Okay, has yeah. that changed? Uh, well, no. The name? It's still the same. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you do, a lot of people know you from seeing music videos mm -hmm. that always had a nice little twist. You never went for the boring old, you know, produced by, you were yeah. like Sasha Vides, of course. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, how did you even start? Were you that child who was always thinking about creating content, I, film? It's been a journey, to be honest. It's been um, a journey. Mm -hmm. I would say I'm a very young man. Mm hmm um my 30s but my journey to be honest when i look back it's just been um i've always been curious okay i've always been curious i always wanted to know how things are done i was stubborn it's up and down late strikes in school uh, uh. gave my parents a headache <laughs> <coughs> okay i loved creating to be honest uh remember back then i was i used to be very good in fine art in school Mm. I used to be in dance and drama back as well in, in school, choir, singing and all that stuff, okay. dancing, traditional. So I think to me that art, when you transform that, when I started, um, when I finished my form six, I pretty much transformed from what I was doing. It was all art to mm. actually, when I was trying to look for a job, I remember I went to, um, I went to Kampala, there's an Af the studio is called uh, African Images. So mm -hmm. there's a friend of mine who had a studio there. Yeah. So after my form six, I left home. From Kabale. Okay. I told my dad, look, I've finished form six. I need to go and look for work. Mm -hmm. You know, he's like, okay, fine. Gave me a few shillings, came to Kampala. I remember I, um, I booked a one room. <laughs> uh, then I, I think that's when I tried to check on my friend. He's called uh, Kibi. Mm -hmm. Uh, went there to African Images, I'm like, yo, bro, what's up? I, Because I'd taken some pictures previously, so I went there on my prom mm -hmm. to check on him. I was like, yo, bro, I need some work. You know, you need to, can you hook me up? He's like, okay, fine, yeah, sure, no problem. But you can't work here. But there's a friend of mine who's starting up a studio, okay. so you can actually go there and, uh, you know, help him out. So I went to Wandegea. I lied to the guy that I was a good photographer. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, really? You're sure? But I had a plan B because I'm actually, I'm very good at, um, I'm a quick learner. Okay. So he gave me the camera, picked it up. I'm very good at uh, gadgets. Had you worked with picked the camera before, or had you? Well, I hadn't, but I'd actually done YouTube tutorials, so <laughs> I was well prepared. Okay. So I picked up the camera. He saw me taking pictures, like mm -hmm. Let's train you. Let's. He liked me immediately. I like okay. you high, you tall, you do great uh, photography. Mm -hmm. So he started training me. I remember it was almost like a month, a month, just a month. I was very good at photography. In just one month, I was like the head of photography at his studio. Mm -hmm. Taking pictures. I remember I had a studio next to the campus. All the girls were coming in, taking pictures. It was exciting. <laughs> good times. Uh, yeah, so it was good times, uh, to be honest. And uh, yeah, that's how I managed to get into the photography. And now, because back in, that was, I think, back in 2000, 2010, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. when uh, like the whole um, film industry was transforming from the SD to HD. Mm -hmm. Now, because those small cameras, the photography cameras were very good at doing HD videos. Okay. Now, I was one of the first people that used the photography camera to shoot music videos. That's when you started hearing about the whole HD, HD, oh. HD. That's before I even went to film school. Okay, but now you're telling us about when everything is organized in your yeah. life. We want to go back to... We want to go back. Things were chaotic, <laughs> chaotic. I'm rushing too fast. Okay. Yeah, where were you born? I was born 91, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, August, 28th mm -hmm. of August, Kavale Hospital. Oh, so your birthday is coming up. Yeah, it's coming up. Oh, uh, it should be in a few weeks. I was born in Kavale Hospital. Okay. Uh, in Kavale. Okay. I'm a Mchiga. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. Okay. Big family? No, not a big family. We're a family of six. Mm -hmm. my, my dad had two wives, but uh, one passed away, my mm -hmm. stepmom. Mm -hmm. So he had other kids, like three other kids, but mm -hmm. 
officially we're staying with one of our sister, my stepsister. Mm -hmm. So we're a family of two girls and four boys. Okay. And I'm the third. You're the third. Yeah. Okay. All right. So in school, where did you go? Because uh, you school. said finished at six in Kabale. So yeah. So the whole time. yeah, I was very stubborn. I, I, I quite, I was up and down in so many schools. <laughs> I remember form one. Mm -hmm. I was in Kigeza High School. Mm -hmm. That's when I did my Form 1. And up to Form 3, they had to chase me out from school. Because apparently, I had escaped from school. Apparently? Yeah. What does apparently well, <laughs> mean? Hmm? Well, I escaped from school, went out, you know. <laughs> that age, mm -hmm. everyone is curious. Still, I'm curious, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think they found out, then they chased me from school. Then I, that's when I actually came to Kampala. I went to uh, Kitende College. Oh, okay. Kitende, I was chased. I finished officially at Kampala Secondary. Okay. Yeah. S4. My form six. My form six. No, from now, from Chitende, I finished form four. Okay. Then um, from uh, Chitende, that's when I went to. Uh, so I did my actually form four exams. I was in. Uh, I was uh, expelled, but they had to actually let me do because I registered. Mm -hmm. So I come from home. Let me ask you something. Yeah. Normally, when like your child is going wild, people are like, "Oh, you know, it's the friends. It's the friends. It's the people that they're hanging out mm. with." Now, looking back, would you say that was the case for you, or were you the bad friend? Um, to be honest, um, we're human beings, and human beings are meant to. Mm -hmm. They're meant to wander. You have to go out, so experience you, nature. You had a issue with like the rules and. The Exactly. Don't do I was, this. Don't I, was do that. I was hostile. I, I never wanted to, in school I couldn't even tuck it. I just wanted to be free. I, school was boring. Mm -hmm. I was doing my own stuff. I was So you found totally class different. boring. Yeah, mostly. But I used to love history. I was very good at history, I was very good at fine arts. Anything to do with math, science, no. Mm -hmm. I never used to like. But when it would come to like Actually, you know, performing class, I was good. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. just that I never liked the whole system okay, you of education. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what about like entertainment? Were you in that? Now, entertainment, yeah. I was, I was very good at entertainment. Everyone knows that. Okay. Everyone knows that. That's when I actually even got my name, uh, Sasha Vibes, because I remember back in, uh, prim everyone asked me, where did you get the name Sasha mm -hmm. Vibes, Sasha mm -hmm. Vibes? So back in uh, primary school, they made me an entertainment prefect. Mm -hmm. And there's a movie I brought at school. He uh, had this detective, it was called Sasha something. I don't remember the name. Mm -hmm. So guys loved it so much. Okay. This and is in they, primary school? This is primary school. Oh. So the name Sasha has been there for a while. Wow. So in primary school, guys liked the movie and then they started calling me Sasha, Sasha, Sasha. So they actually liked it. So I remember back the time I ended, so we came back for third term. I came with a shot that had the same movie on <laughs> Sasha something. <laughs> Boom. How the name got stuck. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, I remember, I don't, it was just out of, out, out of coincidence, because I remember my mom used to, um, they called it in the water. Mm. So she would uh, have those in the water. So one day, so you out of nowhere, so she's trying to sort out the outfits, again, that's the two day, boom. We found the shot that had, I was like, oh my God, I have to take this. <laughs> boom. Sasha, the name got stuck. Up so now. The you vibes. went into secondary school Secondary Sasha school, well. primary school. Okay, but at home? At home. At home, yeah, they call me Ian. Ian, they call me Ian. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. And your dad? Uh, my dad is a, is a very humble man. Okay. Very humble guy. He's, uh, he's pretty much where I get now because I'm a very hard working person. Mm. I think that's where I get most of um, his traits from. Um, even when I left back in Kaba, left Kabali, mm. he's one of the people actually motivated me to go and work. He told me, you know, you have to um, never undermine any job that you do. Mm. You know, you have to start small. From there, you can actually, you know, uh, come up. Mm -hmm. So I look up to him so much. Okay, that's something yeah. people need to hear a lot. I now, look up to him though. so much, to be honest. In your experience working with a lot of young people, yeah, you know, a lot of people don't want to start there, mm. and that's kind of how you have to build to get to something that's really substantial. That's true for most people. It's uh, it's something that I always tell people because I remember when me when I joined the industry, it wasn't about money. Mm -hmm. It was pretty much about experience, the passion. I wanted to create stuff i wanted to i was curious i wanted to shoot content so i was doing stuff for free i remember when i even started i would even call up artists hey can i do for you a video because i remember i had a camera and then most of them would turn me down and like oh mm -hmm. Genda. but yeah <laughs> when i actually remember that actually i'm the guy who used to hit the map and be like yeah can and I do any of those artists video? come back to you later yeah they uh -huh. have i don't want to mention names but they have <laughs> and it was very tough for them okay yeah i can imagine i mean as human beings we all hold on to our pride yeah it's and, true and having to come back but then again it's in interesting to see how you've grown yeah okay so you go into secondary school you have this 
you know, this time when you're chaotic. Mm. So I was asking your dad, how did he handle it? Um, or was well, it my your mom the one who was more the disciplinary? Uh, well, I think they pretty much understood it. They, they, because they, they used to beat me a lot when I was a child. Okay. But then, from second school, I think they pretty much let the boy just, mm -hmm. let him just wonder, let him just do, because they knew I was very smart for sure. Mm -hmm. They could see how I was performing in school. They could see when it comes to you know performing in class, I was good. But. Let him just wonder. Let him just do. Because they knew I was very smart, for sure. Mm -hmm. They could see how I was performing in school. They could see when it comes to, you know, performing in class, I was good. But other things, I was pretty much out there. Mm. Yeah, I gave him a headache uh, when I was a child. I used to go to movies, go watch movies in Chibanda. That was, uh, that was a very, <laughs> very hard time. But mm -hmm. they pretty much understood. I don't think now they re regret. Okay. Yeah. Well. Sometimes you just have a feeling. <laughs> That's true. I don't know. You're like, this yeah. person will sort themselves out. Yeah. And most mothers are like, we shall pray. I know. <laughs> That's actually what mama, my, my, my mom used to say. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was, um, it came out right, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I, I don't regret, to be honest. Okay. They don't regret either. So you took the decision, come to Kampala, figure yeah. it out. And then you have this camera and then you start filming. Do you remember the very first video you did? Very first video I shot was uh, rubbish. <laughs> I didn't ask if it was great. <laughs> I wouldn't want to even look at it, but uh, I, I will tell you the second one I shot after that. So uh, after that, because still to me it was um, it was more of like experience, really. To be honest, every video that I was doing was mm -hmm. more of like the first time. The f the first video officially that I shot was for Maro. Mm -hmm. Be well. I remember he paid me around uh, eight hundred thousand. I was so happy. I, uh, back in the day, I used to work for Tendo Kagua at yeah. Globtech, um, Globe Tech, mm -hmm. Serena. So I remember Tendo, I stole your camera from the office. <laughs> 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 Mr. Tendo used to have uh, digital cameras, I remember. Mm -hmm. That day we had a, a, a video, we had a photography, because I used to do weddings. I, used to, I, was, I was a wedding photographer. Yes. So over the weekend, we did a, we a wedding, then after that, I'd planned. After the, the, the wedding, mm -hmm. the next day, I sleep with the camera. I call in sick, stay oh, with the camera. So instead of taking it back. Taking it back to the office, <laughs> I had to use it for the video. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Tender, I'm sorry, I'll pay this you back. This is the first time he's hearing about it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so he didn't know. I remember I used the camera, mm -hmm. um, went for the video shoot. Mara had paid me. I remember that day I bought like a taxi. We had made like uh, these... Uh, Dollies, mm -hmm. uh, very uh, local dollies we had used really? up. take a taxi, Chuma. That day, I think to watch take our guru. Then we went to put a taxi to Zambia mm. with uh, my friend Roy B. Uh, so we went to Zambia, shot the video. It was great. It was amazing. Uh, after that, I shot the video, and I never looked back. To be honest. So from there, were you confident when you were starting? Up? I was. I was. It was actually even strange. I don't know. Why, where I, I, I'll get the confidence because to be honest, it's uh, I don't know, but you, you're working with an artist because Maru was already there, mm -hmm. but when I got on set, I was in charge, and you could just visualize yes, exactly I had the story in my mind. Well, I'd written down something, mm -hmm. but I had the story in my mind. We're going down, do this, do this, shoot, stand here, perform. I was a natural, I was a natural, I was surprised. But I believe in myself because I was very passionate about it. And mm -hmm. to be honest, that's why I even tell these young people out there, you need to do what you love. Because the moment you do what you love, it's, uh, there's a way. There's a way. It's just, it's just that vibe that you have when you're doing what you love. You can never feel like you're working in a day in your life. Mm -hmm. yeah. Things so, kind of work themselves out. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, so I shot my video and then from there I never looked back. Okay. Maya came through. There's another guy from uh, London I worked with. Gift of Cardo. The Let Mr. X. Um, uh, the blue three that was Maya Baganda, yeah, like okay. that. 
most people are self-taught. I mean, you talked about just picking up the camera, watching YouTube videos, yeah. and then kind of figuring it out. Exactly. But then you actually went to film school. Now, this is before I went to film school. Okay. I was shooting content. I was shooting videos already. Okay. I was a great photographer. I was. I. I, I would. I, I remember, back back in the days uh, when they would come to office, they would literally request for me. Like uh, brides would come to. They're like, okay, fine. Would you want? We want this guy. Mm -hmm. And I was a great photographer. So to be honest, to me, that training of photography actually, and I tell this uh, tell this to so many young filmmakers, any great filmmaker, or any great cinematographer, you have to have you have to have a photography background because from photography. Let's say you're out on a wedding. Yes. It's raining. It gets dark. Uh, some maybe the bride goes somewhere. You have to be changing all those settings. So that training right. really nurtured me into actually becoming a great cinematographer. Oh. So that's even before I went to film school. Okay. But so I saved up some money. I remember back in my Kawan room, I okay. saved up some money. So there's this guy I used to like. He's called Clarence Peters. He's actually still one of my favorite directors. He's from Nigeria. Mm. So I follow him a lot. I'm watching behind the scenes. I'm like, okay, where did this guy actually study? So that's when I found out he was studying in um, City University, Cape Town. Mm -hmm. So um, I was like, you know what? Maybe I need to try this. If he's doing this, he's great. He's, he's killing it. I need to try his journey as well. Okay. So I followed him a lot, found out the school he was studying in, one of the best schools in, uh, in Cape Town, actually one of the best schools in Africa. Mm -hmm. um, I had to convince my parents because I remember they wanted me to go and uh, to go to campus. I didn't go to campus. I didn't want to go to campus. I, by all that time, I was working. I told them I didn't want to go to campus. I remember they even paid me some money. I used it <laughs> for campus. Yeah. For you to go and like I didn't go. I didn't, I didn't like it. Oh man. I was against the whole system because that's not what I, I wanted. That's mm. not what I loved. So I saved up some money. I had to convince my dad. He's like, you know what? You've been making money as a photographer. You know, when you hear about cameraman, cameraman. Yes. Hey, my son has so make at you. I look at a cameraman. Mm. They never wanted that. So, saved up some money. He also supported me as well. Did you ever sit down and tell them what your vision was? <sighs> or did you even know what your vision was at that point? My dad doesn't talk too much. Mm. He just picks up a few things. But he could see, for sure. The boy left. I just gave him just simple shillings to go and... But he's actually now paying his own rent. He's supporting himself. So he could see this guy is actually... He's going somewhere. Mm. So he believed in, he believed in me. So when I told him I wanted to go and uh, uh, study in South Africa, he's like, oh, do you actually know people there? I'm like, no, I don't know people there. But I have friends who know people there, who know people there, <laughs> that when I go there, I'll actually, you know. Um, uh, networks, networks. So, so, important. so it was all about network. Mm -hmm. So I talked to this lady, this lady I, I used to, every time I would uh, go and print uh, photos, I would go, this lady who I knew, she told me she had a brother in South Africa. He could mm -hmm. help me okay. get accommodation and stuff. So yeah. everything I did online, applied online. Uh, so that helped wanted, you with a visa? Yeah, mm -hmm. helped me with a visa. Mr. Tendo signed off, signed me off, <laughs> gave me a farewell. That's when I left for South Africa. I remember I didn't even know anyone. Wow. Nobody. So, but because there's someone who had booked for me a place somewhere, uh, the Ugandan who used to have a room, because back in South Africa it's more of like you share, you share mm -hmm. apartments and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I leave South Africa. Uh, went to City University. So when I got there, it was just, to be honest, it was just like, because when I got there, the guy actually picked me from the airport. I didn't even know. The story is going to come later. Mm -hmm. So he picks me up. I, I meet this Rasta. He had red locks. I go, oh, fine. Um, the guy, I'm also Ugandan. He told me he's also Ugandan. He's like, oh, okay, cool. Uh, you'll be staying with me. He's like, oh, fine. So I left, uh, went to his apartment. And we started. I started doing film school. And I remember my, my, my school was like two minutes. So I would just walk from school. Oh, right. Just two minutes. Just, just a two minute walk. But I didn't know this guy was a musician. Oh. So a month in, I uh, remember we had a show in uh, b b one of those shows, the artists come and perform and stuff. So he could see me. I had this like, a computer. I remember I traveled with my computer. I'm editing and I'm going to film school. He's like, oh, okay. So you, what are you doing? I'm like, I, I do. I'm studying films. Like, oh, really? Mm. I'm also a musician. I'm like, oh, really? It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I started showing my videos I had done. I was like, oh, okay, that's nice. It's like, yeah, we need to work together. I was like, no problem. It's like, when can we shoot? I'm like, anytime, bro. I had my camera, boom. In a week or two, we were shooting a video. It was just how, you know, luck, just coincidence, how when I left here, the person I didn't know that I met that was my roommate was a musician. Mm -hmm. 
So that same guy is the same guy who actually introduced me with all the musicians who were in South Africa. No. The Ugandan wow. musicians. Because he was the whole clique of musicians. Okay. Now, okay, for him, he didn't have a lot of money. He was a bit broke. Mm -hmm. Pay me some pennies. We shot the video. That's actually when he introduced me to the musicians in South Africa. That's when I met Feso. Feso was a bit loaded. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, I think, I don't know if you remember the song, Stress Free. It depends on face off. Mm -hmm. Before I left uh, Kampala, I talked to Kenzo. Kenzo, I want to shoot for your video. Kenzo was like, no, bro. Tetukumani, we don't know you. So, we, you know. So, just a few years, Kenzo now flies in South Africa. Mm -hmm. He was friends with face off. Okay. Uh -huh. um, was that the time they were doing the song? Yeah, that's the time now they were doing a song. So, Kenzo does a collab with face off. And they want to shoot a video. Mm -hmm. And boom. I'm there. First of all, I had the budget. I remember I was in a mid uh, film school by then. Mm -hmm. He had the right budget. We booked like the best equipment in South Africa, the best cinematographers. I got the best team. Whatever I asked for, he gave it to me. So that's when we shot Stress Free. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, boom, Stress Free becomes like a hit song in Uganda. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And everyone's like, Who this, who's this the, guy? People <laughs> even thought, yeah, now people started looking for me mm -hmm. because they didn't even think I was a Ugandan. People thought I was a white man. What? Or South African, they didn't know this. This nobody even knew. Even Kenzo, when he came through to to South Africa, he didn't know I was a Ugandan. Yeah, he, he thought maybe I was working for Godfather <laughs> Productions, so he didn't know until actually when he found out. So we do stress free. Stress free becomes a problem here in Uganda, mm -hmm. and then people started noticing me. And I remember the first the first artist that flew me from South Africa to go to come shoot a video was Sheba. Mm -hmm. It was Jeff Chio. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we did was Jordan. Mm 